is the religion of their core team, including the founder, while being inclusive to all those who are in need of inclusion, especially persons with disabilities, LGBTQI+, people confused with their gender, ethnic groups, and poorest of the poor who knew also law. Help us to stop ourselves from manipulation of other people and resorting to unjust grudge, conspiracy, and violence, which might affect the people we are trying to serve. We beg for its founder and his core team to be enlightened to see the lies behind the false doctrines and impure and violent motives of the false accusations we make and believe, and open the eyes to the truth of the pride that we hold. Help us humble ourselves, O Lord. Help us to realize that fear, envy, anger, and unforgiveness comes from Satan, and he may to stop whatever right that he is holding. Please allow us to know ourselves a child of God. We also pray for those people who are blamed by hands inclusion between us to repent from the sins they are guilty of without resorting or believing in any false accusations made by either them or any enemy they encounter. Forgive us from our accusations in any form and from all the wrong times. In your eyes, the organization. This we ask in your name. Amen. Our Lady, help of the saint, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for pray us. us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Pedro Alonso. Pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Claire of Montefalco. Pray for us. Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Pray for us. Our Lady, help of all Christians, intercede for us. Saint Monica. Pray for us and our family and friends. Saint Augustine. Pray for us and our family and our friends. Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint Benedict. Pope St. Peace the Dead and Pope St. John Paul the Second, rescue us from our unintended wrongdoings. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy and change the heart of everyone. All organizations and all the people who finally work for the organization who made terrible mistakes, and those the people who took part in the conspiracy to false accuse anyone and hands in the Amen. Amen. The, the worst infected upon you due to COVID-19, this is... Ang mga pananaw at opinion ng pag-uulat na mag-uulat sa programang ito ay hindi ang pangunahing posisyon na pahayag ng pamula ng organisasyong ito. The views and opinions expressed in this live report are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the management of this organization. Uh... So our topic for tonight's edition is Equal Opportunities for Working Mothers. Let's start with the Bible verse whose PubMats is something that I wasn't able to put because 
Ang dami kong pinagkaabalahan today, including one chore after another. But as but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16. Working mothers, how much working, how much mothers, and where is the womanhood? Motherhood confers upon a woman the responsibility of raising a child. This process also changes the way in which she is perceived in society and in her workplace. It can necessitate her to take more than available leave options, and job security can be at risk. Significant social, significant social and personal adjustments are necessary to cope with such a situation. A working mother, lalo na na yung may kakayahan na mabalansi ang kanyang home life chaka work, enjoys the stimulation that a job or career provides. She develops the ability of raising a useful mother member of society and at the same time gains financial independence. Along with motherhood, Work adds to the completeness of being a woman. One could define a working mother as a woman with the ability to combine a career with the added responsibility of raising a child. Within this broad term may be encompassed two different categories of working women. 
the stay-at-home mother who works from home, marami na pong ganito ngayon. And the woman who works away from home while managing to fulfill her maternal duties. Material aspirations and the necessities of daily life often compel both parents to work. A qualified woman may insist on working to maintain an, an effective career and be financially independent. The single working woman or mother is a combination of these entities working not only to run the family, but also maintaining her position as a financially independent head of the family. Some of the points that should be tried to address include these. Does motherhood affect productivity at the workplace? Does motherhood incite subconscious gender discrimination at the workplace? Does motherhood imply that the employee be given special privileges beyond possible entitlements such as maternity leave? Do special policies exist regarding leave benefits and special entitlements that may be needed by working mothers, such as kung biglang magkasakit ang anak? Is flexible working desirable? Can it be taken undue advantage of by the employee? Some of the issues that come into play include the following. Employer issues na kagaya ng maternity, compensated working hours, childcare facilities at the workplace, gender discrimination of working parents, especially in the academic field, employee issues such as fatigue, spousal support, parental support system, child care issues, child health issues such as do children of working mothers have more health problems? The rush of married women into the workforce runs against traditional thinking that women must choose between family and career. Many observers condemn working mothers as selfish, unnatural, and even dangerous to their children and society. Although it's not, in my opinion. It was complained that the rise in juvenile delinquency could also be attributed to women who are working mothers. But needs and requirements of the family unit will always supersede ill-defined logic. Women whether they are mothers or not, continue to work. It's because of, more often than not, aspirational reasons. Many of these mothers are young, mga under 30 or under 40, and have spent years developing their careers. When both spouses work, it may be necessary for the mother to retain her job if she has insurance benefits and if she wants to retire with better retirement benefits. Many of these women find the need to maintain a parallel source of income, a social security, and a sign of independence. A mother may work out a financial compulsion, a desire to fulfill herself, or to supplement the family income. In all of these three instances, she is a working mother but the implications of her situation are different. According to Wilson, many working women said that they work because they needed the money in which they defined as specific material goods, an extra lesson, additional clothes, a vacation, furniture, pag-aari ng sariling bahay, kotse, or kahit isang TV set, arguing their work was bringing a rise in the family standard of living. Both men and women had material and emotional expectations for better standards of living, and a working life could add considerably to achieving these goals. A financial compulsion could be less competent spouse with an inadequate income, or a single mother who is dependent on her earnings for survival. A second income from the mother adds to better living conditions and eases the stresses of struggling for a comfortable life. However, kapag nakabalik na yung nanay sa trabaho para lang makamaintain and advance a career na, na para sa kanya ay kapagbigay ng satisfaction and independence, doon na siya ma-scrutinize at 
mababatikos, magkikriticize. The working mother has to keep the convincing stance that she is working not just for her own sustenance, but also for the betterment of the family. Something like a working woman who put herself out for the kid's sake. Working women change the image of a good mother from one who stayed at home to one who also took on extra burden for her family's benefit. This would, however, okay, not recognize the working mother as an important member of the workforce and an important worker in her own right. It is possible for a working mother to defend her right to work in a number of ways. A less affluent member of society would simply say it brings in much needed extra money. A woman from a better class of living would say she has more money to spare and is utilizing her talents and skills to the best effect. In either case, the most important aspect is that hindi dapat ito maka-apekto sa kalusugan at well-being ng kanilang mga anak. Having to work in such case takes away much of the problems a working mother has to face. A working mother's ability to deliver is considered with trepidation. Having decided to work, can the working mother deliver efficiently at the workplace? Motherhood leads to a definite bias in employment for women seeking a job in traditionally male settings. In general, for both men and women, parenthood changes the way in both men and women are viewed in terms of expected work focus, especially producing expectations of undependability. The authors Heilman and Okimoto also added there are possible heightened associations with gender stereotypes that occur when women are mothers na pwedeng mauwi sa heightened performance expectations that predispose greater negativity to be directed at mothers kaysa sa yung mga hindi pananay when career advancement decisions are made. They are also noted that employment bias occurs against mothers irrespective of whether they were students or working people and that women suffer definite disadvantages when at the workplace. A problem that has been called by the maternal wall by Williams. It is well known that employment has positive effects on the mother. There is an underlying assumption that the roles of mother and wife have relatively less stress as they are natural roles, whereas the role of employee being unnatural is therefore highly demanding. This may question the ability of a woman to handle multiple roles without significant ill effects. There is also considerable rhetoric on the relationship of this unnatural employment to many social evils such as juvenile delinquency and drug addiction and so much more. Regardless of the reasons, a young mother chooses to work, the workplace and work environment as a whole continue to be hostile. Shouldering dual responsibilities may actually decrease productivity at the workplace. Some of the research done has focused on mothers who are working in the academic field. And slower academic progress has been attributed to working mothers in academic medicine. They attributed a definite relation between family responsibilities and gender to academic productivity. Having identified 1979 full academic, academic faculty from 24 medical schools across the country, a 177-point questionnaire was administered with the aim of describing dependent responsibilities by gender and to identify their relation to the aspirations, goals, rate of progress, academic productivity, and career satisfaction of male and female medical school faculty. In this study, the authors noted that women with children published less even after controlling for variables such as years as a faculty member, 
number of hours work per week, and hours of dependent responsibilities as noted from their peer-reviewed publications. They had slower self-perceived career progress and were less satisfied with their careers. The difference seen between the genders was less apparent for faculty without children. Carr et al. also noted that women faculty with children had less institutional support than men with children. They specifically or especially commented that in a group less able to expand working hours because of dependent responsibilities, however, institutional support may be especially critical for maintaining productivity. It was noted here that familial responsibilities with special reference to childbearing disproportionately affected the careers of female faculty. They recommended special attention by scheduling fewer departmental meetings after working hours and making part-time tenures available for faculty. Ito na, maternity leave and benefits for working mothers. Women's recovery from childbirth and their assumption of work and family commitments are likely to be influenced by such personal factors as pre-existing health status, parity, breastfeeding, the availability of social support from family and friends and work-related factors, such as the timing of return to work, job stress, and workplace support. Can a working mother do justice to both her work and her motherhood? The answers vary from a firm yes to a vehement no, and more often than not, the answer lies not in the ability or competence of the woman as much as it does in her on her support system. The question of a support system is very relevant because traditionally all support systems have revolved around men ever since the times when women were believed to be capable of only Koch, Kirsch, und Kinder, German for kitchen, church, and children. A woman who was working before marriage will more often than not opt to take a protracted leave of absence to fully immense herself in her motherhood. Some would even think of giving up their careers for good. The Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993 states that it is necessary to balance the demands of the workplace with the needs of families. To promote the stability and economic security of families and to promote national interests in preserving family integrity to entitle employees to take reasonable leave for medical reasons for the birth or adoption of a child and for the care of a spa of a child spouse or parent who has a serious health condition and to promote the goal of equal employment opportunity for women and men Most of these summarize succinctly the needs of a mother who is not work who is working rather. Working mother's needs are to be served in the interest of preserving the family unit as a healthy foundation for society. Caring for a child has the fundamental value of a serious health condition and has been valued as such deserving that the parent be allowed to take time off for caring for the child. This means that caring for a child is an essential duty that the parent has to perform and cannot be substituted for in any other way. This is especially true in cases when, where the child is one with special needs. Family support is highest among employed mothers and lowest in mothers who were employed neither currently nor before the child's illness or who had quit employment to care for the child. Caring for a child assisted by technology seems to create barriers to maternal employment, diminishing family resources at a time when financial needs actually may increase. Lack of family support and child care services increase the likelihood that mothers of children cared for assisted by technology will stay out of the labor force. Remaining employed buffers the negative effects of care at home on maternal mental health. 
A woman may keep a job just to keep the home fires burning, while another may fight against all odds to pursue her career. In the interests of working mothers in both these situations, a solid support system needs to exist and the prerogative to work or not should lie entirely with the worker, as would be in the case of an ordinary working male. Parties concerned can exploit the situation. That is, a working mother may not be extended an adequate support system, or conversely, she may try to extract special concessions from her employer or employers at the cost of work ethics. Maaring maganda nga sa pandinig ang maternity leave, flexible working hours, at isang child-friendly workplace. Ano naman ang kapaligtaran? Maternity leave is known to be extended or sometimes indefinitely. Often the mother quits work altogether. Flexible working hours might adversely affect other employees and would definitely require their cooperation. As for creating a workplace with childcare facilities, a sufficient number of female employees are desirable. An employee who has a larger number of female employees is likely to be more proactive in child care and nursing facilities at the workplace for the working mother. Provisions for part-time employment and work-at-home opportunities are also easier to provide when the number of female employees and thus the demand for such a facility is greater. The cost-benefit ratio of these privileges needs to be examined. The scale and size of the employer, the health conditions of the mother and child, social support all play important roles. Definitely, guidelines need to exist and would vary across occupations. A working mother may work for pleasure or compulsion but work ethics and professionalism must have their place. These in turn will generate more empathy towards working mothers from all quarters, the employer, the spouse, the family, and finally society. In short, good employees would generate more empathy and better cooperation from their employers. And an understanding and cooperative employer would be able to extract the best from his employee nang walang misuse na mga benefits na nabigay sa kanila. Maternal health has been found to be negatively related to employment dissatisfaction. Studies by Romito et al. and Glazer looked at women in employment before the birth of the first child. Three quarters of women were in the workforce and of these, a third did not take maternity leave despite being eligible for the same, and about a quarter or 24% were ineligible for maternity leave for various reasons. Public sector employees availed of most of the maternity leave. As much as half of the women who did not take maternity leave in the private sector were actually unaware of these options. Working in the public sector, a strong attachment to the workforce, Trade union memberships and education were some factors that affected leave taking amongst working mothers. Working mothers and child development. A woman has the privilege to actually choose between work and motherhood. Social conditioning entails that the woman put home before career, even though no expense has been spared in her education and upbringing towards being independent. The equation in the household where both partners are employed changes with the arrival of a child. Maternal instinct ensures that in the initial crucial weeks, the baby is mostly, if not entirely, in the mother's care. During this period, mother-child bound... Sandali, my cousin has asked for a request again. Mother-child bonding becomes very strong and sees many women happily opting out of pursuing a career. Later on, 
financial implications of living on a single income and economic aspirations compel a majority of women to get back to work. Career ambitions are also a big driving force for a mother. Uh, I, I keep getting distracted by this cousin of mine. Where, where are we actually? Especially one who is well qualified. Women who resume work after a few months are torn between career ambitions and natural child rearing instincts. Even in households where grandparents, relatives, or babysitters attend to the child, a working mother feels ridden with guilt. Pate, yon, yun nga. In families where both the mother and father are equally involved in child rearing, the woman is able to experience less guilt and more satisfaction while being a working mother. Mutual understanding between spouses ensures that along with bringing in the income, both parents not only share the responsibilities of child care and the immense fulfillment that comes with it, but also continue to enjoy each other's com company as partners. These attitudes and values are then propagated through the generations. That is why we do see many families where the working mother is not considered an anomaly, but a welcome entity. Therefore, gender sensitivity must be cultivated at both the individual and social respond social level rather so that as working parents each partner has an equal responsibility towards the children not merely by that ability to earn money but also by the inclination and commitment to be involved in the process of child rearing The effects of maternal employment on children are sometimes positive and sometimes negative. Parents in non-employed mother families were more satisfied with their families at 18 months than parents in employed mother families. Curiously, it was also found that the infant's motor development was positively correlated with number of hours employed per week. Hindi ko to kayang tapusin. And degree of choice for the employed mother families, but really but re correlated negatively with choice for the non-employed mother families. These results suggest that paternal employment may not be detrimental for infants born prior to term. Indeed, it may be beneficial, especially if the mother has a choice in the matter. For preschoolers, neither mother's employment transitions nor their welfare transitions appear to be problematic or beneficial for cognitive achievement or behavior problems. Adolescents whose mothers began working reported statistically significant declines in psychological distress this pattern was the strongest for their symptoms of anxiety. Employed mothers' positive motivation for working, low role conflicts, and gains in self-worth were associated with their favorable descriptions of their children. Mothers' employed status benefits children by improving family income, better disciplined work behavior, and better structure of family routines. Studies have noted that maternal higher education was found to be a powerful mitigator of possible negative consequences for children whose mothers were working from financial necessity or were experiencing role conflict. 
Young Blood et al. explored differences in parent, child, and family relationships for employed and non-employed single mothers of low birth weight and full-term preschool children. They found that employed mothers had more positive perceptions and provided more enriching home environments for the children. They noted that in single parent families, employment and consistency are positive influences on the mother-child relationship. The answer to whether work pays as far as parenting is concerned is believed to be complex. Women who held lower rung jobs experience much more negativity in their parenting styles. Considering that income increase is a really positive factor that leads to better mental health of the family unit in the long term, low-wage jobs may not benefit the family unit materially or economically. These factors can have an effect on the parenting style in working mothers. The family's emotional climate and mother's mental health are both important factors that determine the effect of employment of mothers on the family unit. Preschoolers experience a significant decline in time spent with their mothers where, when their mothers go to work and total time spent with the child has shown to decrease by as much as two hours per day. A trade-off is found between time and money as family income increases, whereas mother's time with child decreases. Hence, these two may offset each other. Mothers may often compensate for this by decreasing social, educational, and personal activities that do not involve the children. The incidence of childhood obesity was found to increase sa pag dagdag din ng maternal employment as the number of hours spent with the child decrease. Kaya nababawasan ang access to healthy food and there is an increasing in dependence on junk food. The Millennium Cohort Study Child Health Group stated that long hours of maternal employment, rather than lack of money, may impede young children's access to healthy foods and a physical activity. Children were more likely to be overweight for every 10 hours a, work, a working mother worked per week, and this relationship was significant for children for households with a higher annual income. In contrast, it was noted that for pre-adolescent children, maternal employment typically conditioned by mother's level of education and child gender was more strongly associated with fathers' and teachers' perceptions of children than with mothers' perceptions. Minsan, it's especially with fathers' and teachers' perception of daughters. Fathers perceive their five to six-year-olds as having more problem behaviors when mothers were currently employed full-time. Fathers and teachers viewed children's behavior as more problematic when less educated mothers had been employed during more years of the child's lifetime. Mothers' transitions into employment were related to improvements in adolescents' mental health. Adolescents whose mothers began working reported statistically significant declines in psychological distress. The effect of maternal employment on adolescent daughters was studied by Jensen and Borges, and they noted that daughters of non-employed mothers had a closer relationship with their fathers, perceived them as happier and friendlier, and experienced less anger and tension in the home. With adolescents and teenagers, an improvement in their mental health was found in correlation with increased incomes in the family. Depressive and aggressive symptoms increase with mother's exit from employment. It appears that when mother of adolescents enter the labor force, they compensated for time away from their young teenagers by cutting down on time apart when they were not on job. Conclusions 
In short, it is possible to be a woman, a mother, and an achiever. Many have done it with help from society, and others have battled endless odds to prove the same. In today's world, it is both desirable and incumbent upon mothers to be working like their spouses. We in the developing world, and still in the close of the culture and tradition of a male-oriented society, should acknowledge that, contrary to traditional belief, that a working mother is not a good mother. A working mother can, in fact, be a better mother. A working mother, especially the one who has the good fortune to be able to balance her home and work, thanks to all the factors mentioned above, enjoys the stimulation that a job or career provides. She not only feels better about herself, but is also forced to take better care of herself in order to make an impression. Along with motherhood, a successful career adds to the completeness of being a woman. The major stresses of being a working mother remain lack of time and the feeling of guilt due to perceived neglect of the parenting role. The rewards are many, including personal benefits, financial rewards, and improved family life. To enable this, considerable adjustments are necessary at the individual level and at the workplace, which help the mother to fulfill the dual responsibilities of career and motherhood. And here's a take-home message. The working mother epitomizes modern womanhood. The modern work environment needs to consider the special needs of this working population, changing its orientation from male dominance to gender neutrality and parenting-friendly behavior. The joint family and the nuclear family unit both need to adjust to the needs of the working mother so as to allow a healthier family to develop. So we are still selling hands in inclusion stickers, 250 pesos for we include our yes, and 150 pesos each para sa mga iniibig ko, mga Pinoy PWD stickers. Ang ating H&I tote bag naman ay small 220, medium is 240, large is 260 pesos. With text at the back, you may add additional 50 pesos. If you're interested to buy One Inclusion Nation t-shirts, the size and the prices are 400 for extra small, 410 for small, 420 for medium, 430 for large, 440 for extra large, and 450 for double extra large. The mode of payment is via GCash or PayMaya, 0917-701-9684. I repeat, 0917-701-9684. You may message H&I FB page if you want to pay via Palawan Pawn Shop, Palawan Express, or Cebuana Luwilier. At narito po mga delivery method. Talk, talk. Grab Mr. Speedy Philippines, Lala Move and Go Go for NCR Bulacan, Pampanga, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal, and nationwide via LBC. Our organization is looking for volunteer researchers, volunteer captioners, and volunteer YouTube uploader. Qualifications include the following. Willing to work as a volunteer, has a laptop, desktop, and strong internet connection, has committed to work, good attitude and character, and a college graduate. You may send your resume at handsin.inclusion at gmail.com. At magkakaroon pa rin tayo ng Inclu Training Computer Basics this month. Stay tuned at our pages for more details.
And there will also be a sensitivity and empathy webinar live via Zoom on May 21. Free event po ito with interpreters available. Presented by Dr. Therese Bustos and Mr. Mark T.Q. Antiqueño. And follow our social media accounts by liking our Facebook page, Hands in Inclusion PH and Inculadio PH. Follow us on Instagram and WordPress, Hands in Inclusion PH. Follow us at Kumu at HNI Philippines. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hands in Inclusion Filipinas, and tap the bell notification for more updates. And I'd like to greet Paul Matthew Somera. Salamat po sa pagbibigay support. And I have to watch your YouTube channel if ever I needed more inspiration. Thank you. Thank you also for showing your support in your small way. So we're just about to wrap up our really fruitful working opportunity for Working Mothers Special for the Inclusive Report. If there are any takeaways that you would like to suggest, pwede kayo mag-comment sa comment section to our Facebook feed or sa YouTube to be uploaded later on or tomorrow. And thank you ulit sa panonood. Please bear with me if there are some inconveniences you have encountered. So there are some sacrifices that had to be made, but we have to be as professional as can be. So once more, this has been Billy Sent Makuse for the Inclusive Report at Inco Radio PH, Equal Opportunities for Working Mothers. I have this strong belief na lahat na working mothers deserve magkaroon ng equal na opportunities. They can prove na may kakayahan sila na maging productive member of society while fulfilling their best role in life, which is motherhood. And here at Hands in Inclusion, we believe in a God first and truth first inclusion na dapat manaeg. It should always prevail. And here at HNI, we always put God first. Have a great evening, everyone. And don't forget to pray bago tayo matulog.